Okay, Tony at the Fish Gum Channel asked me if I would do a video on water clarity. And Tony's got a great site over at Fish Gum. You've got to get over there. He's got great content. And he's also in the developmental stages of an artificial bait called Pomp Chews. And it is exciting stuff. And if you look at his videos, he's got all sorts of different testing that he's done, and uh, I think he's pretty close. It's pretty exciting stuff. So get over uh, to the Fish Gum channel and make sure that you subscribe while you're there and hit that bell and get the reminders for any new videos that Tony's got uh, coming out. So let's get to it. Um, water clarity. How does water clarity affect surf fishing? Well, I'm no expert, but my dad was a good teacher, and sometimes I listened. And uh, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, the clearer the water, the better chance you have of catching high-quality fish, pompano and other species. And the worse that water gets, the more chance you're going to have of catching Mr. Catfish. Now, if you like catching catfish, that's fine. But uh, I personally don't, and um, so let's uh, let's try to give some tips here on what we look for uh, when uh, when I walk out on the ocean. the The first thing I want to do is um, I want to look at the, the the waves that are cresting and look at the top of them, and I want to see if I can uh, look through that water and if it looks transparent. And as you can see in this wave here, this wave is gin clear. And this is, this is good fishing here. Uh, and I've always had a theory of, you know, gin clear water probably isn't as good as just a little bit dirty water for Pompano. I've always had my best luck when the uh, water is just a hair dirty. But for the most part, it's beautiful water. And uh, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's let's take dirty water. Well, this this is what you're going to see. It's going to look like uh, chocolate soup. Just you know, no way you're going to see through any of these waves when they're breaking. And and more importantly, you know, look out there in the ocean. Make sure that this terrible muck of an ocean goes all the way out within casting distance because Sometimes uh, you'll have water that isn't necessarily dirty. It might be a, a white milky cover, color, and we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, too, is, is uh, you know, if you get out to the ocean a little bit too early, you're not really going to be able to tell what the water clarity is. Now, here's a picture from my Pompano Brownie channel. And if you look at this wave over here with the sun just coming up, well, it, it's got a, a greenish color to it. But the truth of the matter is, is until that sun comes up and we can see what's going on with that water, we're just not going to know. Now, does that mean we have to wait before we get to the beach, you know, wait for the sun to come up? No, absolutely not, especially if the Pompano are on the bite. You know, get yourself out there on the beach and get your rod set up and take your chances. Uh, another thing uh, I would like to point out, too, is, is sometimes if I get to uh, the beach, and let's say it's, it's low tide and, and the water looks a little dirty, but I look farther out and, and it, it looks pretty clean. Well, a lot of times uh, I've found that when the uh, as tide is coming in and the water gets deeper, that dirty water might just turn into a strip that's only uh, 40, 50 yards out, you know, easily something you can cast past. So something to remember there is your tides will affect your water clarity as well. Um, and I, I personally feel that deeper beach, uh, beaches are, are a little better to fish on uh, because you have the ability of fishing all the way through the tide cycles where shallow beaches you know you got to be there maybe an hour or two before high tide and an hour or two afterwards but anything after that the, the the water is so shallow 
that I don't think uh, you're going to catch anything because you know the the pompano or, uh, are going to feel uh, unprotected in water that's shallow. So let's uh, let's talk about uh, that milk I was talking about too. Um, you know, here's what it looks like from an aerial view here, but you can see it's it's not brown, and you can also see farther out in the ocean that it, it's crystal clear water. But when you're on the beach, you're going to see more of a whitish color, not brown, and, and that's definitely not a problem. You know, especially if you know you can outcast it. Now, there have been days where uh, you will catch pompano right in that milky water, but you may have to... You may have to tip those pomp chews uh, with a little bit of uh, fresh bait to help those pompano uh, smell that uh, bait a little bit more. Any advantage you can have, you, you've got to go for it because I have definitely seen days where I've been using fish bites and uh, my bites started to slow down, but a guy next to me might have been using cooked sand fleas uh, and he was having better luck. So you've, you've got to take advantage of the... Uh, the pompano's sense of smell. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover besides water clarity is uh, I wanted to talk about this, this site we're on right now, uh, Zoom Earth. It's actually zoom.earth. It's not a .com site. But if you just go to uh, Google and type in the word Zoom and Earth, you'll get to it. And it's a pretty neat site because as you can see here, uh, here's a beach on the... Uh, on the ocean here and you can see that when these satellite images were taken you can see structure that's out here and so you could if you really wanted to pinpoint yourself you say well how do i do that you know yeah every time i move this crosshair to a different part of the beach it does change my uh, latitude and longitude but how, how am i gonna you know take care of that on the beach when I'm trying to find the spot. Well, you can go out there and if you have a, uh, if you have an iPhone or Android, just go to your respective store and search for Compass or Commander Compass Go. And this is the free version. There is a pro version, but the free version has worked fine for me. And it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, I use it all the time. You know, if I get to a beach and I start catching fish, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, add a map destination on my uh, my app and give it a name, something that makes sense to me, you know, depending on where I am. And, um, and, and if I have to come back a week later or a month later, I know I'm going to end up right on the beach where I was especially helpful if you don't have buildings nearby and all you've got is wildlife uh, and and you know nothing to triangulate with well you're going to need something like that smart app and it works great for me the other thing that's pretty cool with that is if you use that app in conjunction with zoom earth what you can do is you can add a destination and you have to type in the latitude and longitude. Now, usually latitude and longitude is done in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So uh, that's kind of tough stuff to type out. But what I like about this Zoom Earth is, is another way you can type in latitude and longitude is you can click on this area here and it changes it to digital. Okay. So you on your uh, Commander Compass app, now you could add a destination. Let's say you got your, um, let's say you were using Zoom Earth and you uh, you saw a structure out here. Now here's a beach I fish right here, so uh, I'm going to give away one of my fishing spots. But this particular image right here, we call it the, the uh, paddle wheel, but... Um, it's really not a paddle wheel. We'd like to think it was, but uh, maybe off of an old uh, paddle boat. But it really isn't. What it is is it's an old metal boiler, and it, it's out about a hundred yards, maybe a little bit more. But it's within casting distance. You can get close to it. And my nephew Chris, he he hit this spot one day, and he it was awesome. He 
you caught a bunch of pop quickly. And uh, so, but let's say you were using Zoom Earth and you, you found some structure, whether it was one little piece of structure or let's say you wanted to make sure you, you were on the beach across from this structure. Maybe it was the only one around. Well, all you've got to do is put that cross here on the beach where you want to be. And like I said, especially helpful now. You could just stand in front of this house, but what if the house wasn't there? So just move your crosshairs to where you want them and then come over here on the uh, latitude and longitude and click on it and get the digital version. And type that into your app. You can add manually add a map destination. Now, the only thing to remember there, I'll give you a little tip, is make sure if it doesn't populate the latitude with north and the longitude with west, you, you're going to be in trouble. I've had this world. Uh, I'll type in uh, the digital format 80.308669 and it'll it'll throw an E on the end for east instead of west. And you know you're in uh, you're in North America. Everything that you put in for latitude longitude will always be north for latitude and west for longitude. If it puts in an E, it's going to put you in Russia somewhere and your wife is going to wonder why you're late for dinner. But uh, so that's one little tip there. Make sure it's always north and west. Uh, for some reason, it's it's like a hybrid version. You type in digital for manually adding it, but it's got to make sure it says N and W at the end. So uh, neat little program, and uh, I've used it. I used to love it when Bing Maps had a bird's eye view, and I could change the direction I was looking uh, to look through the um, the water at a, at a better angle, but unfortunately I can't do that anymore. Um, let's get back to water clarity a little bit. Now, this, this map here is a good example of what I like to do sometimes to, um, to read the beach a little bit. Maybe it's, it's not so much on clarity, it's just reading a beach that might have a, a deep hole. Uh, I've always been fond of fishing the deeper beaches but uh, if you look at this row of waves here, if, if you decide you can't f fish one day, don't give up. Go to the beach, and especially at low tide, and, and watch your wave action on some of your favorite beaches. Now, if you see a whole set of rollers here on the left and a whole set of rollers on the right, but you got nothing in between here, well, there's a good indication that you've got deep water there because that's you know, that's what propels waves. The shallower the water gets, the quicker that the uh, the roll of the wave starts. So that's your key that you've got possibly a little hot spot there. And when that, uh, if you do have a, either a, a hole or a, some type of a, a cut going through, when that tide is going back out, that might be throwing all sorts of bait to those pumping and waiting for you. And that would be a good time to get your crosshairs on there. And, uh, you know, in your case, you're going to be on the beach, so you won't be using the Zoom Earth. But that's a good time to get your app out and set a destination. So when you get out there fishing, uh, the app is pretty cool. Once you set your, your destination, you could have 30 destinations in the app, but once you set your primary target, I should say, for uh, the destination that you name here. You can name it anything you want. It'll count down as you're walking towards your destination and the counter will actually go from 80, 60, 40 feet. And when you walk past it, it'll start increasing again. So, um, you know, one little tip here, uh, you may find that it's a little off in accuracy if you're not on the same level of the beach. If you're way up here walking or way down here, uh, it might be off by 20 feet, but it's it's going to put you on your spot. So anyways, uh, we talked about water clarity. We talked about how Pompano like clear water, maybe even just a little bit dirty. And we also talked about how not to give up on a dirty beach. The tide might clean it up uh, or if we can if we can cast a clearer water, we're good, too. Um, the only other thing I can add to that is, is if you find yourself not casting far enough, maybe it's time to go out and get yourself some longer surf rods. Uh, it's going to help you in many ways. It's going to get your bait way out there and give you a hundred yard cast. It's also going to have your line 
a lot higher in the air when it's in its rod holder and the waves won't be beating your line. Uh, it's going to be easier to detect a bite. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Remember to go over and check out Tony's site, Fish Gum. You're going to love it. And, and if you like this video, please subscribe to my Pompano Brownie channel. And make sure you uh, hit that little reminder button for uh, getting my new videos. And that'll do it for this video.